Hi, I'm Kelly Holmes, the National School Sports Champion. Some schools find problems with behaviour at lunchtimes, but for others it's a productive and active part of the school day. This programme shows how two schools have used sport in very different ways to turn lunchtime problems into lunchtimes with a purpose. The Deans is an 11 to 16 comprehensive school with sport as a specialism. It's located in a semi-rural part of South East Essex, a popular school which attracts students from outside the area. We're oversubscribed and this year we've had to increase our number to admit due to the school's popularity and I think it's largely due to sport. Such is its devotion to sport, the school starts every day with Chinese-style aerobic exercise. It activates the brain and body for the school day. Sport has influenced the ethos right across this school in terms of encouraging student leadership, those skills of teamwork, creativity, guidance for other students and also now in particular that whole agenda to do with health. But for the deans, as for many other schools, it wasn't the morning that was the issue. They found that there were increased behavioural problems at lunchtime, where most of their 1,100 students descended on the playground. It was clear that something had to be done. I think we were at a point where we were discussing maybe solutions, and the sort of solutions are looking at reducing the amount of time at lunchtime, because increasingly that was the time in which we were picking up problems, a lot of time was being spent, after those non-contact times in dealing with the issues that were raised then. Some schools have reduced lunch times to 30 minutes or done away with them altogether. But with physical education and sport high on their agenda, the deans felt committed to an hour at lunchtime. To keep students occupied, the school looked at ways to increase activity rather than reduce it. To achieve this, they zoned different areas of the playground. It's not a new idea. Having previously been a school sport coordinator, head of faculty Vicky Hopkins had seen how this concept worked at a primary level and wanted to transfer her ideas to the Dean's School. I looked around and thought, well, we're asking students within six weeks to go from playing in a colourful, vibrant playground to standing in a concrete square and expecting them not to antagonise each other. So we've really tried to develop the same sort of sense of, of play from a primary school, but perhaps moving more towards sport than play. Initially, the playground was zoned into year groups, but that didn't work too well with students who had friends outside their own year. Instead, the zones were laid out for different activities. We started with Activity City, which was an area where movement games would take place, um, netball, frisbee, basketball, football, so traditional games. But then we had to appreciate that not every child wants to play in that way. So we've then extended that following the theme of being in a collective community to downtown where games can take place without balls. So running races, tag games, uh, even some agility games as long as there's no projectiles so to speak. And we've also got the village which is a quieter area for children just to sit and chat without the threat of being hit by football at any opportune moment. The organisation at lunchtime is coordinated by the PE department and run by activity leaders there's an assortment of equipment available. The majority of it's surplus PE gear that isn't needed for lessons. As well as footballs and basketballs, the younger students in particular have a wide range of play equipment they can borrow. Can we borrow a basketball, please? Yeah, sure. Students pay the school a two pound deposit for an activity city card. The card is then exchanged for a piece of equipment. Can I have a bit of equipment, please? Okay. The leader retains the card until they bring the equipment back. They can bring it back at any time over lunchtime. They don't need to play with their equipment for the entire of lunch. And then when their equipment safely returned, their card is returned, ready to be used another day. The Dean's gifted and talented students have also gained from the developments at lunchtime. Once a week they take part in activities that hone their specialist sports skills. 
we're going to touch the light, move ourselves back and go all the way around and then look for the next light and then all the way around and look for the next light, okay? Go! This special equipment is designed to help develop their reaction time and physical fitness, which can contribute to performance in their respective sports. Going. Last few seconds. Good. Okay, well done, you four. And rest. Very, very good. Light. So you're not going to need so much. Light energy. Okay. Right. Carrying on. A commitment to an active lunchtime not only help raise attainment in PE and school sport. The effects have been felt elsewhere in the school. Teachers have noticed an improvement in behaviour after lunch times as well, a time when fatigue and lack of interest usually creep in. Um, you could have water running down like a stream if you're near a stream. If you're, if, you're lucky enough to, if you're lucky enough to have a river, you could have a water mill. It helps our afternoon lessons because the children have used their energy, they, they're ready to come back to learn, and it's all part of being healthy. Ensuring that everyone was included in the lunchtime activities took a bit of extra thought. PE staff noticed that not everyone was keen to take part, and the Dean's SEN group spent their time in a classroom, which didn't fit in with the school's message of get active. Two hits, two hits, and then pass it on. That's it, it was a challenge to get them motivated, but Vicky and the Dean's SEN coordinator, Ray Coe, devised a new use for the equipment they were already using with their gifted and talented group. And stop. Oh, how do we say this again? You would have come first if you'd have got more, but you didn't. The students develop their motor skills by zapping lights on the panels and earn points for skill and speed. So grab a noodle. Grab a noodle. And go. What we found was that those students are unconfident in using the activities at lunchtime. So we've worked with the Senko to identify some children with low self-esteem as well as low physical motor skills. And we invited them down into our yellow room, which is a closed off area where nobody would see them and they wouldn't feel embarrassed or shy about performing. We don't make them get changed because we found that one of the reasons they couldn't access the extracurricular activities is because they weren't able to organise themselves to be able to bring their PE kit and get changed and eat their lunch within that short time. Jane, you need to go a bit faster. We've now got to the stage where several of those pupils have now applied for activity city cards and are using the equipment outside at lunchtime as well. OK. Francis and Ryan, two year eight SEN students, now enjoy all the benefits that Activity City offers outside as well as in. I was um, with my friend Brian playing, um, it's like a ball game where you catch it with a special racket. And we were also playing frisbee and different other games. I like Activity City because it like, helps my balance games and stuff, like the bubble ball game. As well as being healthy, these activities, which may appear to be ordinary games, actually help fundamental movement skills as well. Fling socks, for instance, help with hand-eye coordination and can be transferred to racket sports, which require a good side-on posture and throwing action. One of the things that I particularly like about it is the children don't realise they're taking part in PE. So we'll have students that take part in Activity City, but perhaps aren't so keen to take part in PE lessons and try to stay round the edges. And they're always developing their skills in order to, to become better at what they're doing. And that obviously has a positive effect on on our levels in lessons and our levels um, of our teams and our competitions. Levels of a different kind have also been going up during lunchtime at Raw Marsh Community School near Rotherham. Hello and welcome to Remix Radio. Hey, what could try number we next? Remix Radio transmits at lunchtime throughout the school and has helped increase students' physical activity levels. The station plays requests, puts out school announcements and interviews students. The A Block, the A -block quad is open from 
quarter to, till ten past. And as long Ron as Marsh had similar five, behavioural problems to the deans during lunchtime, but tackled the problem in a different way. We asked all the students um, what activities they'd like at lunchtime, and on that questionnaire we included dance and music questions, and there was an overwhelming response uh, to them wanting music at lunchtimes. So with that sort of information, we started very humbly with a CD player um, and were amazed at how many children and youngsters stayed around the music. The school's quad area is testament to the success of the music. There's a covered seating area, space to dance, weather permitting, and even table football. But the key was developing the use of the CD player into something more ambitious. Raw Marsh is linked to one of the 105 City Learning Centres, or CLCs, in the country that provide innovative ways of teaching and learning. A partnership between the school and the CLC enabled the ambitions to be fulfilled. When we just had a CD player, it was inadequate because obviously we couldn't reach the ear of all the young people, should we say. Now we have the full radio station. We've installed speakers all over the campus and therefore we can reach every young person. And there is an active lunch down on the playground and it's at quarter two to quarter past. And bring your privilege card and you can use whatever you want. Now lunch times are more lively and active. The radio station has certainly been number one as far as the students are concerned. more than just sit down and eat because before we used to be in classroom we just sitting and eating his dinner and we get a bit bored. Yeah so. and with music it makes it more like fun and just not like playing and stuff to do with gymnastics and dancing. It makes it more interesting because we've got a beat to do cartwheels and everything to and then we can practice like getting more flexible. <laughs> It's not just for those people that are sporty, it's not just for those people that enjoy dance or enjoy music, it gives us a tool to work with the other youngsters here. What we've also found is that music is something that affects every young person we have. Uh, so it makes no difference what gender you are, we've got males, we've got females, we've got them all dancing, we've got them singing along. So it's, been, it's had a very positive impact. The benefits have been felt right across the school. We've improved punctuality, certainly with Year 7 and Year 8 to afternoon lessons. We've improved attendance to afternoon lessons for those same two year groups. We've also changed the culture to some extent in terms of making it a positive environment. Lunchtimes at Raw Marsh and the Deans have been organised so that structured activities give students a focus. The playground is zoned for different activities rather than different year groups. Suitable activities are available for all. And in both schools, a key benefit has been an improved attitude towards learning. I still think for students, having that time to release their energy, reduce their stress levels, whatever they need, play with friends, socialise, learn to, to share, that's a really important skill that they can bring back into the classroom.